It's Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the program. Uh, we got a great hour for you. Uh, coming up at 7.33, we're going to be talking with uh, Congressman Rick Crawford. He'll be on the line. It's always great to have him on. But before we get to that, um, Mike Masterson in his uh, Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette uh, column uh, recently had a piece entitled Insight from Turmoil. And um, in this uh, in his column, he talks about the story of uh, Ed Monk and uh, the story of Senator Stephanie Flowers. Now, you'll remember Senator Stephanie Flowers because, uh, you know, she was made national headlines on leftist websites for standing up for a stand your ground bill. But she actually threatened a. Uh, State Representative Bob Ballinger and told Alan Clark, Senator Alan Clark, to, quote, go to hell. Uh, all of this is on video. If you haven't seen the video, it's an online sensation. You should go check it out. Ed Monk joins us on the phone. Ed, uh, how are you this morning? Fine, Paul. Thanks for having me on. Yes, sir. I really appreciate it. Now, I, I just want you to tell the people uh, your story as if, you know, they, they have no idea what this story is about. If you'll just start from the beginning. Yeah, well, um, I moved back here to Arkansas, where I grew up, in uh, uh, 2010 after retiring from the military. And then in 2013, I requested to meet with my state senator, uh, Stephanie Flowers, and she granted it, invited me up. I met her in the Capitol, about a 15-minute, very cordial, disagreeing, but cordial meeting. And at her request, it was uh, observed by a Capitol Police officer who wrote a report about it, and he states that it was non-threatening that I left without incident. So... Cordial meeting in 2013, I had absolutely no contact with her for four years. Four years later, February 2017, I write her a very polite email because the legislature is again in session, and I say, at your convenience, as your constituent, I would like to meet with you again. Well, she never answers that, but she prints it out, and she handwrites on it, this this makes me, uh, this is intimidating and harassing, that, that very polite uh, email. And she gives it to a sergeant of arms. Now, the sergeant of arms of the Senate are not law enforcement. They're basically ushers uh, and, and errand runners. They're yeah. not cops. And he, she hands it to a sergeant of arms to take this to Capitol Police, get me a photo of this Ed Monk. Uh, and I don't want him contacting me in any way at, at the Capitol. Uh, so she's telling some staffer, I don't want the constituent contacting me anymore in any way, which, of course, he has no way of doing, at least legally. So according to four state police memos that I got from the Freedom of Information Act, um, that's two days after I sent the email, that Senate Sergeant of Arms comes up to three state troopers who are just working security in the Capitol and hands on my photo that he got through ACIC, which is a crime. Now, can, 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 can I stop you right there? So yeah. uh, if she, she instructed uh, to go to the Capitol Police, and then apparently, I'm just deducting that, they they were like, well, you know, what do you want us to do? I'm, and, and so instead he goes to yes. state troopers, right? Well, yes. According to the, the chief of the Capitol Police, Chief Hedden, he said, I looked at that email and I, I determined I could take no action. And he told me in a recorded phone call it was written as professional as if I had written it. Yeah, and that's email. because Chief Hedden is a great guy, uh, for the record. Uh, okay, so but, go, go but ahead. He talked to, according to this Senate Sergeant Morms in his deposition in my lawsuit, uh, a captain in the in the Capitol Police then ran me an ACIC and gave uh, the Sergeant of Arms a photo of me, which is a crime. And so the Sergeant of Arms, according to four state police memos, approached three troopers in the Capitol, handed them my photo, and said, this is Edward Monk, a police officer in, in Arkansas. Uh, he was in the Capitol this morning, in the senator's office this morning, confronted the senator in an irate manner that made her feel threat and had to be forcibly removed from the Capitol by the Capitol Police because of his behavior toward the Senator. And this is Which, what this uh, is what the Sergeant of Arms told the state trooper again? According to four state police memos and uh, phone calls to the state police, yes. Wow. And you weren't even at the Capitol. You were never forcibly removed, right? I've never been forcibly removed anywhere. No, I wasn't even in Little Rock for several days before this. This wow. wasn't a misunderstanding or an exaggeration. This was a completely fabricated lie. And so... The, the trooper in charge of that three-man detail immediately, without confirming it or verifying it, and there's a reason for that, calls his supervisor at the headquarters, uh, state police headquarters, uh, Captain Aramia, and says, hey, we got this cop out of control over here, uh, threatening senators. He's been kicked out. We're looking for him. He may try to return. 
And you're a policeman. That, you're 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 law enforcement, right, Ed? I'm a part time two police officer in Whitehall. Yes. Sir. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Continue. Uh, and then a captain in the state police calls my boss, my city police chief, and you know, and reports this as fact. Your officer is up here, out of control, threatening a senator, has been kicked out, and of course that results in a phone call to me. So if I go back, you would, and then of course immediately uh, within hours they know it's an absolute lie. Uh, but they don't call my boss immediately. Uh, and tell him, we screwed up, it's an absolute lie. And when I start calling up through the state police, running the rabbit back down the hole, finding out where did you get this lie you reported to my boss, um, they won't cooperate. And it, it took me a very long time to understand why they were obviously used for political purposes uh, to try to intimidate a constituent. Why they wouldn't cooperate until I found out that the sergeant of arms, who they say did it, they, they say, but now they won't publicly admit is a retired state trooper. That's what. That's when the, the dots connected, and I understood why they were circling the wagons and conspiring. Um, I had a 40-minute office meeting with the deputy director of the state police about this, and it, it ended with him, I mean, promising me and assuring me he would dig into this. The state police would find out why it happened, who initiated it, and he would get back with me. And he's, he's never contacted me after that meeting. And I have a letter from the state police director, Colonel Bill Bunt, it says, when I asked him to, to help me find out who gave his troopers this false report, because they wouldn't officially tell me, he said, well, my, you know, my troopers in the Capitol, they did not know. They have no way of knowing, because they do not know the, the personnel of the sergeant of arms staff over there. Well, now, that, that's clearly a false statement, because in his deposition, this sergeant of arms, Al Vernon Rogers, who's a retired state trooper, said under oath in his deposition, he knows all three of those troopers by sight and name, and he was the drill instructor for two of those troopers, in state police troop school. Hmm. Plus, I have a recorded recorded phone call with one of those three troopers where he names Al Vernon Rogers as the person who gave him the false allegations about me in the Capitol, and I have a memo by a captain in the state police that where he says that corporal told him that that Sergeant Barnes was involved. We're talking with Ed Monk, and you can obviously understand why I wanted to have him on the program. Uh, folks, because this is uh, a, an injustice. I mean, this is really wild that this would happen to a private citizen uh, by uh, by our own government. So, Ed, do we actually know? It sounds to me like whoever made up the the story that you were at the Capitol when you were not, that you were irate when you were not, that you were removed forcibly removed when you were not. That 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 probably came from one person, and now everyone's circling the wagons. Do we actually know? who it was that decided to fabricate this story? Not not yet. We don't have proof because we've only deposed one person in the lawsuit that I filed. Uh, and that one person, Albert and Rogers, the defendant, the sergeant of arms, who the state trooper told me gave him the false information, he, he claims absolutely no knowledge of it at all. I mean, not only did he didn't say it, you know, he, he did, wasn't around it, never. He says, I never ever heard anybody say you were there that day that you got kicked out you were already i've never heard that but in a recorded phone call i have the trooper says that albert and rogers gave him the information and he also told that to a captain who typed a memo about it um so he's denying it but we're hoping to get other deputies we're hoping to depose those three troopers among other things because no one's ever gotten the three troopers together and told me what they said mm -hmm. um and then that's just it that's what i couldn't understand why the state police after giving this horribly you know, defaming, slanderous, damaging report to my boss was giving no effort to try to tell me who gave them the lie, and in fact, were resisting by lying. Interesting, interesting. So, and then I uh, had a meeting with Ann Cornwell, the director of the Senate, and gave her these memos. You know, this isn't me alleging this. Here are state police memos describing how they were given this false report, and she said she would look into it. And then she had a meeting with Al Vernon Rogers. And, and it was, she only had one sergeant of arms in the meeting, and it was Al Vernon Rogers, the defendant. And Corporal Lewis, the uh, trooper, one of the three troopers who took, who received the uh, false information from Rogers and passed it up the chain. The captain that he called at the headquarters and Captain Bryce of the Capitol Police, who Rogers said gave him my photo. She had a meeting with all those firsthand people who were there that knew firsthand what happened. And when I talked to her on May 4th after this meeting, she said they, they, they did not come up with who made the false allegation, but she sent me a letter that said all protocol was followed and there was no intent to give any false information. Gosh. All protocol was followed, is what the letter said. 
And so you say the sergeant of arms also was a state trooper at one point? Yes, he was not only, a, he had retired recently from the state police, but he was on uh, the TV news every morning, you know, telling you where the speed traps were. He was the face of the state police. He was on the TV news in the morning. He was a recruiter for them. He was a drill instructor for them. And the few years before he retired, according to what he said in the deposition, one of his duties was to be over in the Capitol during the legislative sessions providing security. Exactly what those three troopers were doing over there. Okay. So he knew the system, he knew the troopers, he knew the Capitol Police, which is probably why he thought he could get away with it, and it's probably why when the on-duty trooper heard it from this retired, trusted known trooper, he didn't double-check it, he didn't verify it. He, he, this is a trusted fellow retired trooper. He's not going to lie to him and give him something totally fabricated. So it got reported right up the chain. It's really strange, and all of this originates from Stephanie Flowers, Senator Stephanie Flowers, who became, uh, I guess, somehow she felt threatened by a, a cordial professional email that you wrote her, um, much like she, you know, I mean, I, I just think of Stephanie Flowers in this video where she's uh, threatening Senator Bob Ballinger, you know, saying that if you pass the stand your ground law, maybe we'll use it when you come down to Pine Bluff. And I might feel threatened just because essentially uh, insinuating because he's white and would be carrying a, you know, a gun on his hip or something, you know, I mean, it was very, uh, irrational moment for her. And, you know, it seems to me, again, this email that you wrote her, I don't know. I guess I'm noticing a pattern here, Ed. Yeah, a lot of people saw one of her outbursts during that long committee hearing that, that involved Senator Garner. But if you watch the whole meeting, which was, the, I don't know, either just short or just over an hour, she actually had three mm -hmm. outbursts where she screamed and cussed, which the media called emotional and passionate, <laughs> which, instead of unprofessional, vulgar, and threatening, which is actually what it was. Uh, and I've had a lot of people say to me, okay, you know, you told me this story. I thought it was kind of out there. Maybe, maybe you know, Edna, if you were exaggerating. But now that I've seen how she acts, not not in private, but in public, on video, um, now I understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it all, it all happened two days after she got a very polite email from me saying, as your constituent, it's your convenience. Could I please meet with you? Which, you know, I have the constitutional right, as everybody does, to politely interact with their government officials. And so this was not only a slanderous attack on me and my character, but it was an attempt, a political attempt to illegally use law enforcement to try to intimidate me to not communicate with my elected official and not go into the Capitol. Can you imagine what would have happened? Now, I've been up to the Capitol several times. I've been on radio programs. I've, I've been requested to testify at a couple of committee hearings. What if, I, just by chance, I had wandered into the Capitol on the afternoon of February 23, 2017, when three troopers were walking around with my photo and, a, and a, a lie that this guy was armed and dangerous, had just threatened the senator this morning, had gotten kicked out, and might try to come back in here. What would have happened if the troopers would have seen me in the Capitol at that moment? Yeah. My photo? yeah. I mean, that would have been terrible. I mean, you would have been framed. I mean, you were already framed, essentially. Yeah. And, but in, in my, this, the false allegation, which probably involves somewhere between one and three or four people, is bad. But the cover-up that has followed that over the last two years, um, so the, here's, here's the state police's official position. Three trained state troopers in the Capitol got approached by a sergeant of arms. Now, there's 10 Senate sergeant of arms that were gold coats and name tags. Hmm. And all of their photos are up on the wall with their names on them, right there by the Senate. So three troopers got approached by a Senate sergeant of arms who gave them this false report, which they, they reported this, so they know this happened. And now they're saying, you know, we just, these troopers just can't come up with who did it. Even though there's only 10, they wear gold coats, they wear name tags, and their photos are up. And even though I've got a recorded phone call where one of those three troopers tells me who did it, and I've got a state police memo by a captain who says that corporal told him who did it. Mm -hmm. But if you ask them right now, of course, they probably wouldn't answer you, but they would say, as the, the director of the state police, Colonel Bill Bryant, wrote me in a letter, we have no way of knowing because the, these troop, my troopers do not know anybody over there in the Senate Sergeant on staff, even though we know that's absolutely false. It's so the, and then, again, the Senate and then the Capitol Police. Captain Bryce of the Capitol Police told me in a recorded meeting I had with Dan Cornwell, and he was in it. He said there's no possible way the Capitol Police would have given my ACIC photo 
to a Senate Sergeant at Arms because he knew that was a crime. You can't give a non-law enforcement officer a he has to product. But in his deposition, Al Vernon Rogers, the Sergeant of Arms who did it, under oath, said that Captain Bryce of the Capitol Police gave him my ACIC photo. So you can always understand one or two bad apples. But instead of, okay, this happened, as the state police say it did, the false allegations, identify who did it and deal with them. The state police is lying to me, the Capitol Police is lying to me, and the Senate staff is lying. Everybody's lying to try to cover up and protect the state employee who did something extremely unethical and probably criminal. Well, so okay, so what what happens now? You say you're in the middle of a lawsuit. What 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 what's yeah. the uh, what's the end game for you? You know, people. That, and what do you want out of this? What are you trying to get out of this? And what I tell them is, it, it shouldn't matter what I want. If I'd have died the day after the false allegation, it shouldn't matter what I want. What everybody wants should want. If who's in government and out of government, everybody should want. When when this happens, something this unethical, actions by a state employee in his office, in his position, while on duty does something this unethical, everybody ought to want to identify that person, anybody involved in doing the unethical act, and get rid of them and deal with them. Yeah. That, that's what should happen, whether I want it or not. Uh, right. Even if I said, ah, forget it, forget it, everybody's, no, no, we don't want these type of unethical people. And now, two years later, with everybody lying about it, everybody who's lied about it. I'm not saying they can't get into heaven. I'm not saying they're, they're horrible people. I'm just saying they can't be in government. You can't have people who will outright lie and outright use law enforcement for political purposes illegally. You can't keep them in government. Huh. I can't argue with that. I can't argue with that at all, Ed. And I think, uh, man, I, I just, I'm just i so sorry that this has happened to you. This is terrible, you know, absolutely terrible. Well, it's been, it's been over, and every time uh, it gets worse, every time I find out new information, well, so we deposed, we've done one deposition of the defendant, the sergeant of arms. Well, they also deposed me. He's being represented by the Attorney General's office. He has a, a, an attorney from the State Attorney General's office because he was a state employee when he did this. So in their deposition of me, they're showing me emails that I sent to Stephanie Flowers back in 2013 to ask for the meeting that we did have, the polite meeting that we did have. And this attorney representing the defendant handed me printed copies of these emails that, that I also have. In these printed copies, they have changed the times on them to Greenwich Mean Time instead of local, six hours ahead. So it looks like I'm emailing her at one in the morning, two in the morning, uh, it's, you know, suggesting, well, weren't you harassing the senator by emailing her in the middle of the night? Because they changed the time to Greenwich Mean Time, and so instead of 7 p.m., it, it says, you know, 1 or 2 p.m., or 1 or 2 a.m. This is the, uh, the Attorney General's office of the state of Arkansas is doing. So every time something happens, more state employees act unethically and, wow. and I, I, i'm continually surprised about it i shouldn't be but i'm continually wow. surprised yeah that one la that that last point that is uh that yeah. is that looking, is outrageous I, I have copies of the emails i know when i sent them and i'm looking at it and it, you know, it says you know i can't remember that 1 a.m but then it says gmt plus zero dot zero and i've been 24 years in the military i know what that means so they changed it to grants mean that gosh and she's she's asking me why did you why did you keep uh emailing the senator into the middle of the night in the morning isn't this harassing and i'm looking at it go this is not correct what do you mean it's not correct the numbers are right there it's you know it, the attorney from the state attorney general's office in the deposition recorded uh doing this wow okay well ed i mean you just got to keep telling your story you know um yeah. th th this is this is this is outrageous well, please ed thank you for coming on and, and keep us updated about this this is a this is just outrageous this is outrageous so anytime paul thanks for having me on yes sir yes sir best of luck to you ed monk everybody